Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Okay, here we are on week five. Um, we'll be doing chapter five, which is what did Jesus's body and blood pay for? What was bought at the cross with the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus? And um, I just want to kind of go back through. Well, let me, let me before I start, I want to encourage you and invite you to October the 8th. I'm going to be speaking at the Praise Church. It's on my channel. And it's going to be, uh, a lot of people have asked if you have a day conference or um, a seminar or a workshop. That's what it's turned into. Um, I just spoke to the lady this morning. She goes, I feel like you're supposed to speak most of the time. And so I'm going to be doing a workshop, if you will. So if you, um, I know a number of people wanted to come to the retreat and it was too long and weren't able to, you're going to be blessed. The Lord started downloading some stuff this morning, so um, which is so exciting because it's not normally that he downloads. It's early. So I'm just kind of like, okay, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I just wanted to tell you about that. And then also about the podcast, which will be starting on October 4th, and it's going to be every Tuesday and every Thursday at 4.30 on Christian Mix 106. And it's going to be a lot like Terry Talks used to be, where I'm just going to share a 20-second 20, 20 quick, well, maybe it's two minutes. I can't remember exactly what it is, um, but a short, short nugget, and it's going to just be real targeted, something that you can just take, kind of like a devotional, if you will. It'd be driving along the Word of the Lord. It's going to be real intense Focus practice um, principles that you can practice to transform your life. So Christian Mix 106. I just wanted to tell you about that. So that's two exciting things um, that are happening in my life where the word of God is going forth in a mighty way. What time, Terry? I'm sorry. At 4.30. And it's a Christian. And you, so you go to Christian Mix 106. It's an awesome radio station on your computer. Like it's a web-generated radio station, which I met this lady in Christian women in media which i'm very involved with and if anybody's got a book in them a song in them they're not sure what's in them but they're trying to find out but they know it's christian join this the the um the collection of women is amazing and if you're just thinking i don't really know what i got in me but i just want to be involved with christian women and media just means out there preaching the gospel it looks different for for a everybody this lady has a radio station um some people have written eight books some people have a book and they hadn't written it yet it's all ages from like we had some 25 year old girls that were off the charts amazing these women women when they started talking i was like oh if i had known what these girls know at 25 and then we have some women that are probably 75 that have written eight books so there's just such a um just an array of people but just want to encourage you in that that's where um just what God's doing is mind blowing to me. I received a birthday, an early birthday present last night from somebody I coached that two years ago in Australia, the girl Shelly, she's always on this thread from Australia. God, all the things that are, you know, Satan, what the enemy, what God uses, Satan tries to you know, terrorize and torment and tarnish. But just like the internet is such an amazing tool that of course can be, um, you know, tormented, but that is how connections, a lot of connections are made. So just be open to what God's doing in your life. He's calling everybody to a different lane. Just run in your lane and watch what God does in your lane. Okay. So, um, a quick recap. First week was knowing God. One of the Lord is ministering to me as much as, as I minister, uh, he will tell me something new. Um, one of the things I was listening to, uh, bless you. I was listening to a pastor um, just last week, and he said if you that the Lord had had him go into the Bible and write down every time God, not Jesus, but God spoke, and then what was he saying, and to look at his character, like what was his purpose, what was he saying, and what was the name of God or the character of God, you know, how did God show up? And he said he came to know God, and so my, I just kind of went, what? He came to know God in a deeper knowing when he studied how he showed up for other people. So if you want to go into a more intense study on knowing God, if you're like, I just I don't know him like I want to know him, because none of us know him like, it's layer upon layer, then there's a, just a good thing to do is just start saying, when did God speak in the Bible? And highlight that and look at what was his name? Did he show up as, your provi as the provider, as the I am fill in the blank? Okay, so the second week, so that's the foundation. You can't pray this whole book, what Jesus bought at the cross, is about empowered prayers and praying from a place of victory. 
You cannot play, pray from a place of victory if you do not see yourself victorious, if you do not know the crown you wear, the royalty that's on you, the ring, the robe, the shoes, the, the armor that God, that he is actually your ship. You don't know these things, that you are a child of God, that it has already been restored and there is no curse on you. Then you walk around thinking, oh, well, you know, I'm in a beat up cursed world. This is, I'm supposed to be this. I'm supposed to be that. I'm supposed to be um, hurting all the time. I'm so, no, no, that's not God. So you have to know who he is. Then you have to know his original intention. And then you have to know the truth. You have to know in the chapter 3 is that man fell. Adam fell. The first Adam fell and legally gave the right to Satan into this earth realm. Not God. So, oh, it breaks my heart when I hear people blaming God. Because it wasn't God. God's the one that came in after Adam messed up. Messed up. And then chapter 4 is God fixed it. And so we're moving from um, God fixed it. I mean, God, man failed to God fixed it, and then as God fixed it, okay, so it's fixed. Well, what does fixed look like? What does that mean for us? And so now today, we're going to be looking at how he fixed it with the blood and the body of Jesus and what that means for us. What are the benefits of that? And I do want to preface this. I spent so much time in my introduction to this book. Um, we are not chasing the presence, the gifts, the benefits of God without chasing God first, okay? I want to I want to say that. It's like it's like a little, you know, you always see these little at the bottom of the um, you know, the drugs or the bottom of the food or the bottom of something you purchase, there's this little clause. Well, it's I need feel like I have to say that because of the prosperity message that has tarnished the church. But if don't let that keep you from the truth. And so with that, because if your life's not in order, if God isn't first, if the gift giver isn't first, then he's going to correct that. And so we always want to serve the gift giver and receive what the gift giver has for us. And so I just want to really get that. So if you just happen to jump in on this one and haven't followed this, I want to make that real clear that this is not what this is about. But he says, forget not my benefits. He says when you take that cup of his, his blood and his body to remember what he did. So that's what we're doing. We're saying, praise God. We want to remember. We want to receive. Because remember last week, and I'm going to camp on that before we start, we stopped with the violent take it by force. The violent or us. And if you don't know what that word means, then you will shy away because you're like, oh, I don't think Christians are supposed to be violent. But this means to be fired up by the revelation of God, to be assertive in the things of God. This whole book, this whole study is you cannot be violent. And so I'm going to say what it means because you have negative connotations of what the world or the Webster Dictionary says. It's violence is fighting and hurting other people. No, that's not God. Take it by force. You're, you're, it's the spiritual warfare against Satan, not people against him take those thoughts captive and line them up with the truth of the word and to be violent meaning to take it by force whatever is yours if he bought healing for you then you take it with your words you take it with by faith that's what we're talking about here and until you understand that you won't show up in your prayer life with such violence which is a assertion or which is the revelation may you get the lord i pray that the people listening will get a revelation because it says that you will show up with revelation of what God has bought for you. So I just want, and that's in Matthew, I think it's 11, yeah, 11, 12. All right, so now we're going to move into chapter 5, and we're going to move into the blood. So it starts off with John three sixteen, and God so loved the world that he gave his only son. We know this, and we say it kind of in a repetition, like a lot like we do the Lord's Prayer. And I just say to you, maybe for a week, study just that scripture. Like recite it, close your eyes and meditate on it. Like, can we really fathom that verse, what that verse did? I mean, that's the whole nutshell of the gospel, that God came in and fixed what the first Adam messed up by giving his son to us to die, which is God himself. God himself came down here through his son, fixed, fixed what was broken because he loves us so much, because he did not want to lose his family. 
He did not want to lose his children. And he said, I'm going I'm to fix this. I, now, legally, he had to do it a certain way because he's a God of his word. So today we're going to look at what does him coming down this earth, he sent him to die, but really not just to die, okay? He sent him out to be resurrected because it's the resurrection. So a lot of times, a lot of times you'll see a cross and you see Jesus on it. Well, I don't really have a lot of crosses with Jesus on it, okay? Because I don't want to live. He says, remember, I went to the cross, but he wants you living in, he was taken off the cross and rose again and is now seated in heaven. That's the place he wants us to live, is in the resurrection power. He says, I'm going to send you something, part of me, that's going to be inside of you, and you're going to go in my name. We're not stuck at the cross, stuck in the sin. These people that go back to the cross, the same sin, and oh, all that guilt. That's not God. God's like, oh, his blood, my blood that I sent through my son is for one time, and one time alone it is finished. So if you keep getting stuck there, ask God to give you a revelation of what the blood bought. So number one, what the blood bought, if you're taking notes, is forgiveness and salvation. First of all, I'm just going to tell you that I can never in one hour or 30 minutes, 40 minutes, tell you everything the blood bought. Okay. I, it is just today I learned that the blood, like I knew this and I had forgotten it. It's not even in my book that um, it, the blood bought unity because it says it bridged the divide between the Jews and the Gentile was so unity the very last prayer jesus prayed this is it this is something i just learned today as i was like i always i get up every bible study i know y'all i just need you to know because if i get up at 4 30 i am not like running in here at eight o'clock i spend hours the day before like whatever the lord whatever it takes with him so that i can gain understanding and i never understand it all like i as much of the hours that are spent on what i'm pr presenting to you today I learned something new today when I was walking because I said, well, I'm just going to put on a YouTube. Who have I not listened to about the blood of Jesus? Because I have listened and studied and read some good books by some good teachers. And today I was listening and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't even, one of the biggest things that is so important to these times is unity. Jesus's last prayer on the cross was that his people would be in unity in his church body, his relationships. Because he says in scripture that right now the enemy's going to come to divide mothers between daughter, mothers and daughter-in-laws, mothers and children, sons, but that's not God. Because because people say, well, you know the church, that's going to happen. No, it's not going to happen in my house in the name of Jesus. It's going to happen in this house right here. We serve God. And we are not having, those are how you pray, that that's what the enemy wants to do, but it's up to us. But that's what he hung on the cross so that there would be a bridge between the Gentiles and the Jews, all people, that his church would become one body. So unity right there is something I learned today that I had kind of forgotten about. So we could, we could just make a list forever of what the blood bought, but we're going to hit and target. Um, we're going to target some of these pieces, and some of them I probably won't even get time to, so you'll have to read my book. One of my, one of my friends said, well, Terry, you can't preach the whole book, teach the whole book, because they're going to buy, have to buy it and read some of that. You would be teaching it for, for um, over and over and over. So the first thing is forgiveness of sin, and this is, I think we all kind of know that um, it says in Leviticus 7.11, if you're taking notes, and all these uh, addresses are inside of um, where I made a note about the Bible study, and I will put it under this video. So if you're watching this video on YouTube, I'm going to include it on that because I'd love for you to go and find it in the Word so that it becomes real, so you plant it in your heart, and so that you know, so the next time the enemy might say, yeah, but let me tell you how you acted, or, and you, you will know immediately, oh, but the blood of Jesus covers all sin. And you won't stay there. You're like, oh, but let me tell you what the Word says. And so Leviticus 7, 7, 11 says that all sin, all sin has to have blood atonement. So that's why we have to have blood. That's why they took the animal because it, they had to have a blood sacrifice. But this is, you know, happened every year. But Jesus's blood was one time to cover all sin because it was holy and pure. It fit all the legal specifications. It had to be the first fruit. He's the first son. It had to be perfect without blemish. All those things that it had to be, he fulfilled it. Jesus fulfilled it. So that's why it has to be, we have to be atoned. Um, and then it says uh, in Hebrews 9.22 and Isaiah 9.6, it says that 
the government will rest upon his show, shoulders in Isaiah 9, 6. And what that's saying is he's brought our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. John the Baptist says, uh, the kingdom, repent, the kingdom is, of heaven is near, the kingdom of God's the same thing. It's the kingdom of God, but in uh, Matthew, it's the kingdom of heaven because the Jews do not say the word God. It's holy and pure, they don't even speak it. You'll see a G dash D. So the, when you read the kingdom of heaven in Matthew, it's out, of, um, it's out of honor to the Jews because that was the audience that, that he was talking to. But in the rest of the Bible, you'll see the kingdom of heaven. I mean, yeah, the kingdom of heaven, I'm sorry, and the kingdom of God. It's the same. Just so you know when they're talking, it's the same. We're in that kingdom. It says that the government that is rests upon Jesus' shoulders, he, there's a government in God's kingdom, just like there's a, governor in this earth, a government in this earth system. It rests on Jesus' shoulders. Okay, so he brought heaven down to earth. He went to the cross. We get forgiveness of sin. You, but you have to receive it. You have to, Romans 10, 9 says you have to believe it in your heart, confess it with your mouth. Now, we were just talking about this today. Here is what the whole Bible principle is based on. You believe it and say it. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says you believe it, you will get what you say. Jesus said to Solomon, he said, tell me what you want. Say to me what you want. Um, I will say of the Lord he is. I mean, we it's over and over. The blood of Jesus speaks. The blood speaks. Everything has a voice louder than the blood of Abel. Okay, that's the right of first mention. I just learned that today. The right of first mention in the Bible was when Abel's blood cried out for justice and Jesus' blood came and cried out for mercy. Okay, so it has a voice. Everything has to be spoken forth. Everything. You don't just think a prayer or hope a prayer. or um, That's good. But I'm just telling you, if there's, if there's one principle of practicing, it's the law of declaring and decreeing and prophesying and speaking forth. He says, say to the mountain. He doesn't say, just hope that the mountain will go away. Or just wait until I come in. No, he says, I'm telling you, if you've got a mountain, you speak to that mountain. And... I heard earlier this morning, I was listening to, to somebody else pre preach, and they said, you know, which word is more powerful, yours or Jesus's? And, of course, it kind of stops you during the track. You're like, well, certainly the right answer is Jesus. But think about this. What if you're speaking Jesus's word forth? Then it's sharper than the two-edged sword. So that's the power, y'all. The sword of the Spirit the word of God, when it's spoken through your tongue, is the two-edged sword. And it's sharper than a two-edged sword. And it cuts between, it says, it gives an example, the bone and the marriage. So fine, the word so fine that it will cut spirit and divide spirit and flesh, spirit and the world. So the word of God, when you speak it. Okay, so you have to receive salvation from... Forgiveness of sin and salvation, Romans 10, 9. So if you have a friend that's saying, oh, I want to be saved, you know, because remember, it's not just about us. You tell them all you have to do is believe in your heart, confess with your mouth unto salvation. That's Romans 10, 9. Okay, everybody needs to know that. You never have it marked in your Bible because this is the thing. We are here to build a harvest, and you never know. You could be in the grocery store, and somebody said, well, I... And, and look, don't get caught up. I had somebody say, what if I don't know the address? It does not matter. You don't have to know the address, but you do need to know what it says so that you can say to them, you just have to believe it in your heart. And there's the big clock. You have to believe it. Some of these churches say, well, I want everybody to say the sinner's prayer, and I call it the salvation prayer because I become a saint, and you're not a sinner anymore. You're a saint that sometimes sins. See the belief even in that. But just because you say it doesn't mean you're going to heaven. It's that you have to believe in your heart. It's a heart matter. We, have, we do not know who's going to heaven, okay? God knows the man's heart. But just because you say it, like I'm going to just say it so I get a check block. That, God knows your heart. He says you have to believe in your heart, confess with your mouth unto salvation. What do you have to believe? That Jesus died and he rose again. See, there's the rose again part. There's a rose of beginning. He didn't just die because Jesus is alive. He came to give us life. We will have life more abundantly. We shall be forever with him in heaven. Okay, so that's what salvation is. Now, then we talk about, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this part because this is an important part. And I don't have this in my notes, but 
t talking about why we need to study. I love, love, love. Somebody brought this up um, that lives in Finland. Okay. And uh, Tina, I love this. I love that you questioned this because it's so good. Why do we need to know what these words mean? And you keep, they still keep coming up, you know, because you wouldn't want to be violent because you would think it's the way the world's violent. Well, here we go. Salvation in just living forever in eternity, although that is it and that's enough. But salvation, when you study that words, means to be made whole. Nothing broken, nothing missing, no lack. So the sanctification process with Jesus, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, makes us whole it, from glory to glory. You don't just say, oh, I'm assigned into heaven, I'm saved. Now, a lot of people do, and they never go through that sanctification. They're not made whole. God came to set the captives free. He came to make you whole. He came to any wrong thinking to be lined up with his word. In anything that's not working, he came to heal marriages, restore marriages. If anything in your life is not working or broken or not following the standards of God, that, that's what he wants to heal. That's what he wants to make whole. Well, that's salvation. That's what salvation means. It means to live eternally with him and to be made whole. And so I, I encourage you, Romans 10, 9, study that word. Look that word up in the Strong's Concordance. Don't just trust my word. You know, last week somebody said to me at this table, they said, well, my, it doesn't say that for me. And we, we looked it up. I said, well, I, I want to let me look at that up because I want to make sure that I'm saying it right because I don't want to be teaching somebody wrong, you know, as a teacher. Oh. But it, it says in the word, you look it up. You take responsibility so you know in your spirit so that you can teach somebody, you can say to somebody, or you can pray with violent prayers. I know what my God said, and this is not up to par in my life. This is not the way God plans it to be. I will be made whole in the name of Jesus because I take, I seize, I receive what the blood bought me. That's a praying with a violent. I'm taking what God said is mine by force. That's what, that's what that means. And look, you're to pray that way for others. You know, I'm praying for some healing right now for some people. At this table, in my family, oh, I am, I am going to my God, and I am shutting some doors, and I am receiving some things, the people that don't know, because they don't know what God bought them, but I know what God bought them, and I'm going to stand in the gap until I see the goodness of the Lord on what I'm believing for. Because, it, look, I'm going to come in agreement with his word says. And so with that, uh, so what you get, that's what being fired up with the revelation, the understanding of what is already yours. It is already yours. He said in 1 Peter 2, 24, he says, by my stripes, you are healed. 1 Peter 2, 24. I'm getting ahead of myself. No? I'm right on. Look at that. Oh, look at that. I'm all right on time. Oh, I just love me some Jesus. Okay. So um, Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. Let's go there. Because I want you to see about the voice of pro pro prophecy. God never, he always, he says he t sends people out in twos. God is, is everything in this Bible is legal. It, everything has to have a witness. You cannot say something, God cannot say something without a witness. That's what prophecy is. He, he prophesies it, and then he makes it come to pass. That's the witness. So we want to see, well, how did this work? So we're going to Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Okay, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. And then we're going to go where it came to pass in Luke 4, 18. Okay, so I, let's go to Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 first. Who wants to read it? Somebody read it for me. 53, 4 and 5. Mm -hmm. Yet he himself bore our sicknesses and he carried our pains, but we in turn regarded him stricken struck down by God and afflicted. But he was pierced because of our transgressions, crushed because of our iniquities. Punishment for our peace was on him, and we are healed by his wounds. Right, P even the peace of God. He had to receive, I mean, it, it is so full. If you just take that verse and you would study every word in it, your whole prayer life would change, because that's really what this is about. So that you were like, oh my gosh, you see Jesus hung on the cross for you for that right there. And then you might say, yeah, but that's Old Testament. Okay, let's go to Luke 4, 18. Somebody want to read that? 
Ooh, I love this. Because this has already happened. This is not like we're waiting for it. This is prophesied in Isaiah, and now we're reading when Jesus. This is Jesus. It's Luke 4, 18. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Whoop, whoop. That's good. Free favors, mine says. Okay, so let's just break this down. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so well, this is just something right here. This is Jesus. Okay, mm -hmm. now Jesus did not read this until the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Mm -hmm. That's the same with us. It's not us that has any power. Okay, none of us have any power. We might think we do, we got some good skills and we can make some things happen, but at the end of the day, the power that he's talking about here is the power that's deposited as a Christian. It's the power, the Holy Spirit, that's inside of you. So there's two things here. It's deposited in you, that's your witness that you're going to heaven, that's the power of God inside of you. That's how you hear God's voice from his spirit. His spirit bears witness to your spirit. And then if you remember when Jesus came up out of the water, the dove landed on him. And we talked about this when I wore the little dove on my shoulder. When there, everybody sitting at this table, everybody listening to this has a calling on your life. Everybody looks different. Okay, everybody, I just was talking to a lady here this morning who she's ministering to a couple and they're coming to help her cook and you're thinking, oh, well, they're just coming over to help me. No, 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 no. It's a divine appointment mm -hmm. and she'll be speaking life into them. That's her lane. That's what she's called to do. So you're thinking, oh, I'm just going to make some food for the church. Well, that's good. That good. That because that's your giving. But that God's always doing bigger things. But when you pay attention, you're like, oh, my gosh. I get the opportunity to pour out, to speak into. And so what, what happens with this, the resting up on, so the spirit in you is for you. It's for your growth because the spirit and the word of God is what transforms your life. It's for you. But the spirit of God that's on you is the anointing of your mantle and your calling so that you can walk it out. Okay, so I want you to really see that. So he says, the Spirit of God is upon me. So what is that? That's the anointing that you carry to be able to minister and do whatever you do in your lane. And when you start meditating and you're like, know the anointing that rests on you. And you know what God's called you to do. You don't have to see the whole picture, but you need to have a piece. You need to get a vision. You need to write it down. You need to get it in your mind. You need to meditate upon it. You need to see it. And then he'll show you the next piece. But the reason you need to know it is because you need to show up in that. And that's when God, you'll even say, well, I don't even know why I prayed that. Because God prayed it. Well, you, I don't even know why I showed up early. Because God told you to. Well, I, I don't even know because this was a divine appointment. That's what starts happening. It's an anointing. So we see right here because he has anointed me. And I want you to put your name in there because we're here to do the work in the hands and feet of Jesus. We're to be like him. We are not him, but we are like him. We're, his words, his anointing is to move through us, for us, and for others to glorify him. To us, through us, to glorify him. Always glorify the Father. And it says right here, he's anointed to preach the good news. So here's what this whole thing's about. Until you get the good news so rooted, and this is the good news is Jesus coming and hanging on the cross. That's the gospel. That's the truth. He is the way. He's the truth. He's the light. He's the only way. He's the gate. He's the revelation. Okay, it says right here, the good news, which means the gospel, they're the same. So if you want to know, somebody says, well, what is the good news? It's the gospel. It's Jesus himself. It's what he did for us. It's what we're studying. This is the good news. When you get that rooted and you start praying from that place, you're like, Lord, thank you, Father, for the anointing. Like, please, Lord Jesus, can you give me an anointing? No, Lord, I thank you that you have anointed me to preach the gospel. Lord, show me specifically what that looks like for my life. Give me a vision, Lord. Let me see it. Because I can, everybody here, I know what it is. I know what there's, everybody sitting at this table, I know what they're preaching the gospel looks like. And I'm pretty sure everybody here knows it in a small piece, what it looks like in their life. And look, it starts at home. Are you preaching the gospel to your husband? And that doesn't mean with your words all the time. It's like, 
How are you treating him? How are you showing up? How are you encouraging him? How are you being like Jesus? And this is not like I'm trying to like, oh, convict you. I am if the Lord says. Like, this is not what this is about. It's unto him. Are you preaching the gospel? Because it starts at your home, and then it grows out from there. It starts in here. And then it's like, what about your children? Are you preaching the gospel to them in truth and love? Okay? Are you preaching the gospel? Are you preaching the gospel when you go to the grocery store? Are you preaching the gospel? I mean, I'm starting to wear these um, shirts. You're going to love this shirt. This reminds me of you. It says, it's a jungle out there. Stay prayed up. That's what you always say. I mean, when you wear stuff like this, you start thinking, oh, I just have a shirt on that says Jesus on it. Am I acting like Jesus? I mean, you, that's where we need to be. We're walking around with the spirit anointing on us. Like we need to meditate. We need to walk in with that thought. Am I wearing the purple robe? Do I have the signet ring on? You are, but are you wearing it? Are you walking in it? Are you showing up with it? Because that's when God elevates you. That's when it goes from glory to glory. It's like, if I can trust you with, in this arena, then I'm going to send you out to another one. It's from glory to glory. Can I trust you with the small thing? Money, gifts, talents, how you act, whatever. And I will tell you all a little secret. Wherever you're probably struggling on that perfection area of, of allowing the God to make you perfect, not, not yourself, but allowing God's Holy Spirit to work in you and refine you, and is probably the place of your highest anointing. That place is where the enemy tries to knock the door. This is the place he wants to trip you up, make you question, get you to be distracted from. So any time you think, why is, why is that? I'm, you know what? That's something has been happening in the same area. Get above that and say, Lord, 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 what's the gold in that area? What is the golden nugget in that area, Lord? Let me see it. Because Satan's not going to bother you where you got a, got your game on because he, he can't. But the area that just that agitation, that that raised, uh, heightened, like agitated spirit, spirit of fin, whatever, whatever God's trying to work on, there's because there's something really big God's trying to do in that area. Like, if you can change your thinking on that. Okay, so here we are. We're talking about Jesus, what He hung on the cross, and we here we go. The good news, and what is the good news, boss? He says He's preaching it to the poor. All right, so go back to salvation means to be made whole where there's nothing missing. So he became poor so that we could be rich in spirit and peace and health and thinking and money and relationships. Fill in the blank. Poor so that you would let the rich say they are, are poor. I mean, let the poor say they are rich. Let the weak say they are strong. We live, we are just. And we, the righteous, are just and live by faith. When you live by faith, it's in Romans, it says you call things that are not as though they were. I think it's 417. Um, I don't know about that address, Romans 417. I bet if Sheila's on here, she's going to type it. Um, she's a walking Bible. Um, so we call things that are not as though they were. So you see, you have to change your thinking. Do not be focused on your circumstances. Be, speak the solution. Speak the solution. Speak the solution. Turn it into a prayer. Call things that are not as though they were. He has sent me to announce release to the captives. Okay, so anything's holding you captive. Look, anything. Your wrong thoughts, because infirmities, when you do the worst, says you're, you're, he said he took our infirmities. So that's wrong thinking, feeble mindsets. Line them up with what God says. If you think wrong, then all you do is change it and make it line up with the word. And cognitive behavioral therapy in the doctor's world. Mm -hmm. So we have the table here that does that, and she's starting to see, oh, well, okay, that's just this right here. You take it and line it up with what the word says, okay? Wherever you're poor, wherever you're broken, wherever there's lack, God says, no, I became all that so that you could be lifted up to a higher place. Lifted up to a higher place, okay? He sent me to announce. What are we announcing? Release of the captives. You can be released from anything, okay? Anything. Any addiction, any strong cult, speak to it and then release what it is you want. Speak to the mountain and release the truth. And then you quit speaking to the problem and start thanking him for the truth. Start seeing the truth, meditating on the truth. And, and if you can't share this with everybody because they're going to be like, she's saying she has a fabulous marriage and they're about to split up. And you're like, something ain't right with her. 
Okay, she is confused. No, she's not confused. She says, my God says that my marriage can be restored and healed in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to believe him until something else happens. And you say, well, what if it doesn't happen? It's, it's the same thing. What if somebody's believing for healing and they don't get healed? God, you are doing something different, so now I'm going to trust you. His word is still true, and he is still faithful. If the outcome isn't what you expected, he's still a faithful God, and his word is true. And so, Lord, I know you're doing something bigger. Romans 8, 28. I'm going to trust you even when I can't understand it. And I can't wait to see what it is you did that's bigger. My, your ways are so much bigger. I, don't even, I can't even fathom what you're doing. Lord, if you, would, if you would choose to let me have a glimpse of it, I would love to know. Otherwise, I'm going to trust you. And usually, it won't be that minute. It might be a year from now. All of a sudden, he'll give you a deposit, something you're like, oh, I, I, I prayed for that two years ago. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so, we're, so here we're talking about what did the cross buy? Rich in everything. Ca release from captivity. Si eyes to see. Blind eyes in the physical realm. Spiritual eyes in the spirit realm. Understanding, because your eyes are your understanding. Let me have the Holy Spirit in me. Give me the wisdom, but not just the wisdom, but the understanding to understand how to walk this out. Give me an idea, Lord. Jeremiah 33, 3. Like, we, we got this pipeline to heaven now. Jesus is my Joshua, was my Jacob's ladder. So, that's a hookup. There's a hookup from heaven. Our Father who art in heaven, we hallow your name. Thy kingdom has already come to this earth and is inside of us. So let whatever's in heaven that I need, because if I bind it up on this earth, it's bound in heaven. If I loose it, it will come down from heaven onto this earth. That's what our mouth is for. We're to be loosing the things of God in this earth until Jesus returns. And set forth deliverance for those who are oppressed. Who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and broken. So you don't want to minimize if somebody's walking through something. We were just talking about that earlier about being a victim. It's you know we're not minimizing somebody was victimized. Okay, we all we are in that broken world. We've learned that, and bad things do happen. But what he says is, I will turn it around and I will make it right. It might not be like you expected, but he will make it better than it was before. And it's hard sometimes to see that because we get an idea of what it should be like. But the quicker we receive that we are being delivered from being a victim or being oppressed or cruised, or crushed or bruised or what, what brokenness, whatever, and we put our eyes up on God and we say, I don't know how you're going to do it, and I don't know how you can make this better, but your word says you will trade, take my ashes and you make them beautiful. Your word says that you will take me, my crushed, my bruised, my downtrodden past, and you will give me a brighter future, Jeremiah 29, 11. You start telling him what he says you have, and you watch what starts manifesting. Because remember, it, whatever happens in the natural starts in the spirit. Whatever you see around you, you pro probably spoke it forth with your mouth. If you start asking the Lord, show me the areas of my life that are broken and show me where I prophesied it. Show me how I can change that. And he'll give you the word. He'll say, you start speaking this. You start speaking. He told me a while back, he says, you start prophesying. He said, I want you to speak into your future. Whatever you want to walk into, you start saying it today and you watch. You say it today and you watch. You'll walk right into it. Or maybe you won't even walk into it at all. You just lay down because it was something you, you spoke over yourself that was trying to come upon you, and you called it out. You know, thank you, Lord, that I am blessed from my head to my toes. Thank you that I am healed in the name of Jesus. I received, so I'm taking it by force, that by violent. I'm being violent about this because I'm being excited and I'm being aggressive with the word of God because it is mine already. Jesus paid for it. And free favors, how about that? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day when salvation and free favors of God profusely abound. Free favors. Luke 2.52, I pray this all the time over my children and my grandchildren and my husband. My husband and my children and my grandchildren. That's, that's how we always pray. Well, I prayed, prayed this over the men, actually, before I prayed it over the children or the women. I was praying it over all the men in my house. And I would pray this is Luke 2.52, that, that they would find favor, that go into the workplace. They would find favor with God, but also with men, because God works through men. And we need favor. We need positions filled with men at jobs. We need, we need jobs to come forth from men. They come from, and then one day the Lord said, start praying that over yourself. And I'm like, oh, there, there's a good idea. Like, oh, I, I just had the revelation. I'm leaving the women out. Like, and then I'm like, no, I'm going to pray this over everybody. So I, you just take, you take, 
You seize, it says. The word says seize it. You receive it. How do you receive it? By faith through the spoken word. By faith through the spoken word. It's not about what you see. It's what he promises. And look, verse 21. He began to speak to them. Y'all, and all spoke well of him. That's verse 22. Those just words speaking, just jumping off the, believe your heart and confess, speak it with your mouth. Okay, so that's healing. And if you go to 1 Peter 2, 24, it just confirms what those two things said, that by Jesus' stripes, you were healed. Let's go to it, 1 Peter 2, because I like to, let's go to it. 1 Peter 2, 24. Now, it doesn't say you're healed if you see it in your natural body. It doesn't say that at all. It says that you are, whether you see it or not. You see how much t faith it takes? You believe it whether you see it or not. Now, he may give you some things where you have to take action steps because sometimes healing may take um, you not eating sugar, okay? Let me just, like, that's for, for real for all Americans. Or it may take, um, <laughs> let me raise my hand, get up out of that chair and go walk. Like, I, you know, I don't, it's, he may tell us to do our part. You know, we may have some things to do, but it's, he, it's ours and we can take it by, by faith. So 1 Peter 2, 24. He, Jesus, personally bore our sins in his own body on a tree. As on an altar, he offered himself up that we might die, which is cease to exist, to sin, not die in our physical bodies and go to hell, but that we would die to sin. And I love this. This is a, we could study this for a week because when Paul says that he struggles and he keeps sinning, that the thing I want to do, my, we struggles with his flesh. Well, it says right here that we can die to sin and we can choose to live in the spirit and we can speak to the things of the, the lust of the flesh and we can live to righteousness. And then there it is. By Jesus's wounds, you have been healed. You have been. Okay. You have to take it, take it and believe it. And people, Hebrews 10, 35 says, do not throw away what you're believing for because it's great recompense of reward. Because what most people do, Galatians, I think it's 6, 5 or 5, 6 says, if you, if you believe, if you persevere in due season, that's the thing, people quit before due season, you will reap what you sow. And you have to trust God in this walk because it doesn't usually look like you expect. But I will say this. I'm believing for miracles right now because this is the divine timing for signs, miracles, and wonders right now in the timing of the Bible and God's promises, dreams, visions, signs, miracles, and wonders. And so I'm believing God for all he has, immeasurably more. And if it looks different, then I'm going to trust him. But I'm not going to trust him and take plan B. Option A is I'm believing by faith with what your word says because you are true. That's option A. I'm not having a plan B or option B. If he tells me, okay, now we're going to option B because it looked different, then we're going to go to option B. But the just shall live by faith, period, period. And I just want to encourage you, surround yourself with people of faith because people will rob, you will only be able to believe to the level of the people you're around. Because the, John Maxwell calls it a cap. There's a cap and that's what we're doing right here. That's what we're doing right here. Your prayer life will come from your filter, your belief system. So we're trying to raise that belief and line it up with the word of God so that you can believe for what he says you can have. Okay. That's what this, this whole thing is about. He said, my people cannot pray empowered prayers until they know who I am and what I am in them or what I've done for them. And so that's what, which is the gospel. That's what he did for us, the gospel. Okay, so lastly, we're going to, um, so the blood, we talked about the blood in the body because the, and I, I just, oh, so good and so much, but because the body was ripped completely. His whole back was ripped. It had to be completely ripped because it tore the veil. And now I really want to camp on this because this in this book, the goal of this book is to be able to go boldly to the throne, directly to pray to God, to pray to God first, and then be a prayer warrior for him. You know, After you've got this done, then you can go out. Well, the veil was torn so that we could go directly into the throne room and, and talk to our father. But you have to know that. That was his body. It was beaten and bruised, we just saw, for healing. Okay, so that's the body. 
So let's pass out. We're going to take communion. So if you're online and y'all want to take communion, that's what we're going to do next. We're going to we're going to just receive what we just learned about. Okay. Um, and I tried to look at it today. Somebody maybe could Google this. Where is uh, communion in the Bible? It's in Corinthians, but I don't. I could not find it. It's First Corinthians, and I didn't spend enough time to Google it. It's in Corinthians, and it's because uh, I'd like to tell. I'd like everybody to know that. Um, Isn't it eleven? Eleven. First Corinthians eleven. First Corinthians 10, 14, 15. Okay, there we go. See if I knew that right. Okay, so the reason we're um, 10, 14, okay. The reason I want you to know this, because we, listen, these are, times are so important, y'all. This, it is going to get harder in the world. Okay, it's been prophesied. The world is, it's not going to get easier this year. Um, we got crazy out there. Okay, that's why this shirt says, it's jungle out there, be prayed up. But it's not in our when you're in the kingdom of God, it's nothing to be, judgment will fall, but so will the rain on his people. Like, wherever sin is, much more grace abounds. So it's nothing to be scared about, but do not be blind and deaf. Get in this place with God where you hear and, and you're in his presence and you're in his protection and his covering. Because the blood's also protection. I just, oh, I wish I could just teach a year on this. It's, it's just amazing um, if you just get one new little revelation, you see, then remember, it's the, you become fearful with the revelation of God about, you know, you become assert, aggressive and assertive of the things of God. Okay, so 11, 10, 14, it says, is that right? It talks, it, it actually, I look at another one, it says chapters 10 and 11, so both of them actually does it. So yeah, you said 11, okay, so let's so see. Uh, I think it's Matthew 26, 26, 26, 26, I got it, right I got it right here, it's, it's okay. marked in my Bible, I got it. So we're going to go with 11. Um, 23. So I'm going to read this, and the reason I can do it without, and we can do it without. So we don't want to get into a religious thing. You just, it says to remember. But I want to read it because I want everybody to know what the word says, and I really like you to go to the word. And listen, if you have an area of your life that you're pressing in, you're praying, you're fasting, they're just whatever, whatever it is, communion every day, if you're believing for healing, or whatever it is that's going on in your life, there are seasons. There was a season in my life where I was, was, um, I was believing for a good doctor's report, and I, I had, I think, three people praying for me. That's it, because I was in lockdown. I'm like, I'm not, nobody's, I'm going in a prayer closet, and I'm about to do the, I'm, I'm having communion every day, and I pressed in, and I got the good report. I got the good report. Because I was, I was not going to go to somebody that's going to cast out and go running on a freight train about the what if. No, 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 no. I know what my, I know what this fault. I know what this fault. I know how to pray. I'm praying, and I'm going to trust my God, and I'm going to listen and pray. So with that, you may need to do this daily. Let the Lord, let the Holy Spirit be your guide. And so you want to just take what you've learned. You want to read this so that you know we always want to line our lives up with Scripture, always. Find it in the word. Now more than ever. If your spirit doesn't bear witness, look it up. Look it up. If something I said, I'll, I'll always welcome. Like say, well, this isn't, I'm not sure that's right. Whatever. Let, show it to me. Show it to me. Okay. For Here we go. We're going to close out with 1 Corinthians 11, 23. For I received from the Lord himself that which I passed on to you, it was given to me personally that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was treacherously delivered up and while he was betrayed, while the betrayal was in progress, he took the bread. Now, he sat with his disciples knowing what he was fixing to face, knowing what he was doing. He, he didn't go to the cross hoping, thinking, oh, I'm wondering if all this is going to work. No, he knew what he came here to do. Like, he only listened to the Father. He only said what the Father said. Every word, everything is so divine but so he says he took this bread and when he gave thanks so we take this bread and we we lift it up thank you lord for this like you just not something to take lightly like oh let's take the bread no no this is holy this is consecrated into the lord this is like take a moment and thank your father we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you even chose us, that you would even send your son, that you didn't allow us to just go to hell where we were headed, oh God. We thank you that you sent your son, that he came in a human body, and he was fully God and fully human, but he laid down his God part. 
so that he could fulfill what needed to happen. He was fully divine and fully man, but he didn't come down this earth. So if you're thinking, yeah, well, he was God. No, he laid that divine part down and became fully man at any moment, any moment he could have changed that. But he chose to walk for us and be the first fruit. So we, it says, we give, you give thanks and you break it. And so the breaking is like a symbolization, like his back was broken. His body was broken. And for me, thank you that you did this for me, like make it personal. And then it says, take and eat. Because all through scripture, it says that um, you have to drink my blood and eat my body. It says, this is my body, which I broke for you. Do this to call me to remembrance. So what he's saying is when you do this, say to me, I remember what you did. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you hung on the cross so that I didn't have to. Thank you that you were beaten so that I could be made whole and live forever with you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. So then you take the body in remembrance. Now you see, we're not going to stay there at the cross. We're going to remember what the cross bought. Verse 25. Similarly, when supper was ended, he took the cup. Also saying, this cup is the new covenant. So this is a symbol where it's new wine, new man. There's so much in this blood, y'all. We just, the whole Bible goes back to the blood of Jesus. And so we take this cup. It's a little bit hard, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I'm going to drink, drink this in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Get this open. Um, and it says it's a symbol of a new covenant. And so see how much God likes a symbol? He likes a symbol because he wants you to get a picture. That's why Habakkuk 2, a vision, a tangible. That's why acts of faith sometimes, he's saying, put something to it, take a, to walk it out. Because when you drink this, versus just, yeah, I received the blood, and you like put it in your body and you say, okay, the blood of Jesus, I'm one with him, he is in me. Like that takes on a whole new meaning. It's like it's inside your body. He's in you. You're safe in him. You went to hell inside of him in the spirit realm because he went for, for you. You start seeing so that you will pray with more power. Okay, so that you will love with a deeper love. So that you will understand what you're here to do. You, it's just the, the whole level of your walk is, is stronger. So he took the cup. This is the new covenant ratified and established in my blood okay so the new covenant and covenant means cut y'all when you study the word covenant it means cut so he, he was cut so the blood poured out okay and so you see i want you to see the blood the cut the covenant they're all wrapped up together do this as often as you drink it to call me affectionately to remembrance so he's saying again i want you to remember what i did I want you to thank me, you know, speak out loud. I receive the blood. I receive your body. I receive your benefits. It says in Psalms, forget not my benefits. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are representing and signifying and proclaiming. You proclaim with your mouth. You proclaim with your mouth. Words again. The fact of the Lord's death until he comes again. So whenever you eat this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord in a way is unworthy of him, you will be guilty of sinning in the body and blood of the Lord. Let a man thoroughly examine himself. So what this means is we don't just take it. Okay, we receive the blood and we can do whatever we want. No, 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 no. He's saying, I need you to stop. And especially right now, this is the new year, y'all, where each day is atonement right now, where we look at our hearts before the Lord. He says, before you drink my blood, I need you to be, have a repentive heart. Now that's not the, the labor I mean, the brazen altar is where Jesus took care of the sin. But the laver is the second altar we come to where you're washed with the word and you have a repentant heart and you ask for forgiveness. If there's an area, he's like, that's an area that you've been, I'm not happy with. And you're, oh, forgive me, Lord. Now, repentance means to change your behavior, change the way you think about the sin, not just receive the blood and go do it again. That's not God. Okay. There is grace, but grace has been abused. So just want to like, this is holy. This is not something to take lightly. Like when you do this, it says right there, the clause or the little closing is please examine yourself. Verse 28. Because if it's, this is just like holy time with the Lord. 
So, Lord, we just lift up your blood. We thank you, Lord. I thank you for this blood, Lord, that bought salvation, Lord, that forgiveness of sin, that atoned for our sin. This is in Leviticus. If we would, without this blood, Lord, without your blood being shed for us, we would not be able to spend eternity with you. So we thank you for that. We remember and we, oh, Father, we just thank you, oh, God. We thank you for this blood and we take, your word says to be violent and take what it is I bought, that you bought for us. And so we take the healing, Lord, from your body and we take the, the forgiveness of sin, Lord, that we would not be walk in condemnation, Lord, but only conviction where you tap on our hearts and, and we allow, we surrender and allow you to do the work in our heart, oh God. And Lord, we receive, Lord, all the things of blood. Things, Lord, I would say, teach us if there's areas that we don't even have an understanding yet of what this blood bought, Lord. That we would dwell again with you. Receiving your body allows us to dwell with you now on this earth and continually until we to see you again in to eternity, Lord. This day, that we get a remembrance this day that we can dwell with you, speak with you, do life with you this day. We thank you for that, God. That you were you restored what Adam threw away through the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus on the cross. And not just through his death, but through the resurrection. Life came when he became alive again. And so we thank you, Lord. And we receive this blood and we bless and praise your holy name, O oh God. Show us, Lord, if there's any area you're not pleased with, Lord. We don't come... We don't come with a with a heart of um, pride, Lord. We come with a humble heart and say to you, show us, Lord. Speak to us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I hope y'all had an amazing day or have an amazing day. And um, leave me some comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts and talk to y'all soon.